Yeah, hi there, Bobby, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. And I think you completed my second diagnostic pretest. And the purpose of this pretest is to see what kinds of problems you have in the following areas syllable division and grammatical word endings, word stress sentence rhythm, intonation, and thought groups and blending. Hi Michael, this is Bobby. Today I'm going to post Speak Clearly lesson number 25. All right. Diagnostic pretest for sentence rhythm, intonation, thought groups, and blending. And that word you said thought groups, but it's thought, thought groups. So again, don't forget to put that tongue between your teeth. Lesson number 26. Act, active, actively, activity. Compete, competed, competitive. Com that would be competitive. The stress is on that second syllable. Detuly. Humid, humidify, humidifier, dehumidifier, budget, budgeter, budgetary. Lesson number 27. Marriage patterns in rural Turkey are noticeably influenced by endogamous preferences within both villages and kinship groups. Okay. Lesson number 28. Pay, pays, pot, pots, run, runs, cough, coughed, pass, passed, saved, judged, sorted, sifted, planted, circumstances. So the one thing here you want to pay attention to is the S. The S after a a consonant, a voice consonant, is going to be more like a Z. <coughs> so if I say pays, runs, but then I'm going to say pots, because the T is a voiceless consonant, so then the S will sound like an S. Okay, let's keep going. Lesson number 29. Now we're looking at word Conditioning. Stress. Associate. Techniques. Discussion. Resurrected. Consecutive. Dysfunctional. Retreat. Positive. Classical. Religious. Lesson number 30. It's not bad. Don't forget lesson not 30, but lesson number 30. Let me try something here for a minute. Okay, here we go. Now I now I got it. Now this is working better. Harmony, provide, air conditioner, glass cleaner, myself, themselves. Thirteen, thirty, fourteen. 40, 15, 50, 16, 60, 17, okay. 70, Not bad. 18, 80, 19, 90. You kind of had a rough start with the first one, but then you did better with your word stress on these. But 13, 30, 14, 40. Lesson number 31. Downwind. Outdoors, break into, take out. So the, this is a word stress issue. Normally, you'll learn more about this when you get into these lessons. I think when you have a, a verb plus a preposition, it's break into, take out, outdoors, downwind. So we put the stress on the second word in these particular words here. The conduct of the conductor was inappropriate. She objected to 
she objected to being an object of his affection. That's a little hard for you. Let's do this one again together. You ready? She objected to being an object of his affection. Disrespect, interlock, outpace. Lesson number thirty-two. USA, GPA, CEO. Now with these, you don't have to put stress just in the last, but it's USA, GPA, CEO. So you have to put equal emphasis on all the letters in these abbreviations. Academic, analytical, diversity, fortify. Cardiology, discussion, geography, 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 cautious, Canadian, chronological, absentee, good, overseer, Vietnamese, all right, pictures, picturesque, picturesque, technique, quality, Corvette. Corvette. Educate. Education. Motivate. Motivation. Operate. Operation. Right. In case you're not sure, Corvette is a sports car in the United States. I think it's made by Chevrolet. Lesson number 33. Overrated. Again, that TH sound. You, you still need to keep working on that TH sound, the TH, the th, th, 30, 32. He ate it, position, he fixed it. Assume, a broom, cool bike, cool biker, okay. coolest biker. Lesson number 34. The All player right. left the game in the fourth quarter. Okay. Mr. Jones is grading his purpose today. Can you give me a burger with cheese? You take the word gr grade. It's not grading, but grading. Mr. Jones is grading his papers today. Lesson number 35. She spoke with you. How is your homework coming along? Sue can go to the store. Sue can't go to the store. Now this one's going to cause you trouble here. Now when you have the positive modal here, you have to put more emphasis on the main verb. Now when it's negative, you have to emphasize the modal and the verb. So here, you don't want to say she can run. It's she can run. She can run the whole distance. She can't run the whole distance. Sue can go to the store. Sue can't go to the store. She can run the whole distance. I would say she can run the whole distance. She can't run the whole distance. She was at his house yesterday. She wasn't at his house yesterday. Okay, it's okay. Jane could talk to the other workers. Now you got to pronounce that T with more air. You're making it sound like a D. Jane could talk. Jane could talk to the other workers. Jane couldn't talk to the other workers. So when you do the T, make sure you pronounce it as a T, not as a D. Jane couldn't talk to the other workers. Lesson number 36. Okay. Did John go to the game last week? John went to the game yesterday. Now, I would probably focus probably two possibilities. Did John go to the game last week or did John go to the game last week? John went to the game yesterday. So you need to make one of these words here a more of a focus word. I would probably say yesterday because yesterday is different from last week. 
This is called intonation. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? No, no, no. You want to do it like this. You say, what do you want to do? Speaker B goes, what do you want to do? And that way, Speaker B is going back to Speaker A's opinion. Lesson number 37. What are you working on? I'm working on a composition. All right, so composition should be the focus word in that second. What kind of composition? I would say what kind of composition. I would put more emphasis on the word kind. And then the next sentence, you have to put interest on history. You have to put emphasis on history. It's a history composition. Exactly, that was when good. When it is due. It is due Friday morning. Yes, that's good. Very good. Lesson number 38. There's an advantage and a, dis and a disadvantage to your idea. No, not going to work there. This one, when you have two different ideas, right? You want to put rising tone on the first, falling tone on the second. So you'll say there is an advantage and a disadvantage to your idea. Did she go on a vacation in the summer? Okay, now this is okay here. You had rising tone here. Now you have to focus on winter. It was the winter when she went on vacation. It was the winter when she went on vacation. That's pretty good. But you're having trouble with the W there. It was the winter. It almost sounds like it was a it was a winter when it almost sounds like you're pronouncing the W as a V. Kind of, but you're not vibrating it that much. That was a great movie. I will say it was good. No, I probably have to do more than that. So you have to show a lot more emotion when you're showing strong agreement, right? So it's going to be different. So that was a great movie. I'll say it was good. Why didn't you return the book to the library? You are wrong. I did return the book to the library. Pretty good, but you want to make this word not just louder, but higher pitched. So you'll say, you're wrong. I did return the book to the library. I did. I did return the book to the library. Okay, let's go to the next one. I like, I'm sorry, lesson number 39. I like apples, bananas, oranges, lemon, lemons and grapes. She has told me. Now we've got some problems here. Now when you say oranges, you have three syllables, not one. So apples, bananas, oranges, lemons and grapes. Now the other thing is, this this relates to intonation is when you have a b c d e you have five different items here that you're explaining the tone should be rising on each item except the last so then you would read it like this i like apples bananas oranges lemons and grapes once you get to grapes that's when your tone drops in her family. She has 12 members? That's pretty good. You're showing surprise there. So she has 12 members? She has 12 members? My phone number is 888-9002. Did you say 888-9002? That's good. That's good. You put more emphasis on that one number because you weren't That's certain. That's number 40. I want to leave Johnny. I want I would just say there I want to leave Johnny. I want to leave Johnny. To leave Johnny. Close, close, you're getting there. So I want to leave Johnny. 
So in this in the second one, you're speaking to Johnny as opposed to speaking about Johnny. So the tone should be different in the second the second uh, sentence. I'm sorry. Let me start again. I want to leave Johnny. I, yeah, almost like you're pausing there. Just say, I want to leave Johnny. I want to leave Johnny. Or I'm not going with Johnny today. I want to leave Johnny. I want to leave Johnny. I want to leave Johnny. So you're, you're getting there almost. I'm going to the United States. Where? I would say more. Where? Where? Going to the United States. Where? I would differentiate those. Let me see if I can help you out here. If you're asking where, which means I didn't quite hear United States. I'm going to the United States. Where? I'm going in the second one. I'm going to the United States. Where? That just means where in the United States will you go? So the first one, because you're asking for clarification of the actual question and, and, and what was said, as opposed to the other one's not really clarification, but it's extending the conversation, the tone should be different. Lesson number 41. 23 foot long sticks. All right. 23 foot long sticks. All right. Pretty good. What are now in this in this one the difficult the in the first one your statement is finished. So right after Los Angeles the tone should fall. In the second one you're not done because you're thinking about saying this this next idea so the tone after Los Angeles should be rising. You're going I'm going to Los Angeles. I'm going to Los Angeles. Yeah, I don't know. I would say the first one, I'm going to Los Angeles. Second one, I'm going to Los Angeles with my friends later on. Lesson number 42. Bobby Thompson, who lived in my neighborhood, is... No, who lives. Bobby Thompson, who lives who lives in. You have to take the S and blend it with the I. So you have Bobby Thompson, who lives in my neighborhood, is coming to visit tomorrow. Coming to visit tomorrow. Very ordinary looking. Well, no, not going to get that one either. You want to, you, because this is a thought group which precedes the subject and the verb of the sentence, right? So very ordinary, you would say very ordinary looking. Vampire bats weigh about one ounce and have a body which is the size of an adult thumb. So the tone needs to be rising after looking, not falling. Vampire bats weigh about one ounce and have a body which is the size of an adult thumb. Lesson number 43. Sir Francis Galton... Now here... Because this is a thought group, this is your first thought group, then you have a comma, here's your second thought group here. And then you have the last few thought groups. So was interested in the measurement of intelligence. So rising tone, rising tone after Darwin, and rising tone after intelligence. And then because he wanted to increase it through selective breeding. When you get to breeding, the tone should fall of Charles Darwin was interested in the measurement of intelligence. Was interested in. This is what's called blending. You have to take the D and you blend that to the first vowel of the next word. You'll learn more about that as you practice these lessons. Because he wanted to increase it through the through selective breeding. Okay. Lesson number 44. Can you hold up the painting for me? No, you need to pronounce that P with more air. Not can you hold up a painting for me, but can you hold up the painting for me? Can you hold up the painting for me? I wore a light sweater to the football game. Now, too many pauses in there. I wore a light sweater to the football game. I wore a light sweater to the football game. Maybe you should ask Kenneth. He may know the answer. 
That's pretty good. Okay, now, based on your completing this particular pretest, now, you're, you're paying for the additional service, so I'd like you to go through all the lessons anyway, all of these different lessons that this is targeting, but you want to be aware, here are the most important lessons that you want to focus on in the second part of the pronunciation part of my course. You might want to write these down, Bobby. Lesson number 28, 31, 32, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and also lesson number 44. So this is very important. So these are the areas that you want to focus on the most. All right, let's take a look at the second voice recording that you posted. Hi Michael, this is Bobby. What's going on Bobby? Now I'm going to post part B of... Uh, I would say I'm going to po post. I'm going to post part B. Speak clearly lesson number 25. Got it. Question number one. Tell about a recent vacation that you went on. What did you do? This is good, so I can give you some feedback generally just on your pronunciation, your grammar, vocabulary, as you're using it spontaneously. What did you like and dislike about your trip? Okay. Recently, I went to South Padre Island. This place is about a two-hour journey from uh, my hometown. But That's good. So a two-hour journey. You didn't use the S there. That's correct. Because you're using our as an adjective, and adjectives don't take the plural s. Car. This place is located the southernmost part of Texas, and is one. Oh, I didn't. Is located in the southern. I'm not sure if you put in in there. Let me check it out again. Two-hour journey from uh, my hometown by car. This place is located the southernmost part of Texas, and is one of the major tourist spot in Texas. Okay. I did two things over there in uh, South Padre Island. The first thing I did was to attend a sandcastle lesson. The guy who uh, who teaches the how to make the sandcastle taught me how to make uh, um, castles uh, by using different shapes and sizes of uh, uh, sand and water. Then so different sizes and shapes of sand and water. I don't know if you'd say it like that, but you're saying using different, you might say using different buckets or using buckets of various sizes and shapes to make particular patterns in the sand, you might say. Later, I went for a parasailing. Wow, that would be fun. Uh, the tour operators, they took us to... Uh, the, the, the place where the parasailing takes place. The two who? Uh, the tour operators, they took... That. I think you're saying operators, but you're having word stress issues. Let me go back. Let me listen to it again. Shapes and sizes of uh, uh, sand and water. Then right. There's not really different sizes and shapes of sand and water. Water pretty much takes the same shape, but it, it occupies... It becomes a shape when it occupies a certain type of container. The same thing with sand. Later, I went for a parasailing. Uh, the tour operators, they took... So that's, I think that's a word stress issue. The two operators put stress on that third syllable. As to uh, the place where the parasailing takes place. Okay. And they connected the parachute on me the parachute not parachute but the parachute and then they connected the uh, rope with the parachute onto the uh, boat as the boat moves slowly on the uh, onto the boat boat not boat but boat make that o longer that's a longer vowel sound Wait. the parachute slowly goes up in the parachute air. 
Now, you're talking about something in the past, so then the parachute slowly went up. You want to make sure you're consistent with your They vertices. can control the height of the parachute by increasing or decreasing the speed of the board. The one thing I don't like about that trip was... Uh, the one thing I didn't like, I would probably say, or they could control the parachute, you know, by going faster or slower in the boat. My friend, Mr. Gene, who came very late on that day, because of that I could not go for a, a jet ski. So maybe next time I can go for that. I could not go for jet ski. No, you probably say I could not go jet skiing. So there's a lot of verbs. When you're using the word going, it's very common to use a gerund after that. You'll say, I went jet skiing. I went parasailing. I went fishing. I went swimming. I like going swimming in the ocean. I like building sandcastles. I went uh, shopping or something. So anyway, with the word going, it's especially when you're talking about recreational activities, you can use the gerund. That's about it. All right, Bobby, I think we got it. So uh, thank you for completing the uh, second pretest in my online TOEFL course. And now you know, based on your pretest, you know some specific areas that you want to focus on more. And just generally, when you're speaking, and you will get into TOEFL speaking, be very consistent in your verb tenses. When you're talking about something in the past, make sure you're using past tense verbs. And uh, also, when you're using uh, going or the verb go, and you're talking about recreational activities, it's very common to use gerunds after that particular verb.